Warner Reyes Collections, congratulations. You won the giveaway from last week. Comic fam, enjoy your trending comics list. Another week, another list. We have an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. His name's Russ Bright. How you feeling? I'm really, really good, Tom. This is one of those videos that, uh, you know, I hope everyone is caught up on literally everything. Every show, every movie, every announcement, and every new comic book this week, because there are a lot of spoilers coming. <laughs> yeah, spoilers. Be warned. They're coming. And we have some big announcements, something that I've been working on for a couple years this now. This is so cool. Dude, uh, I'm so excited. I'm so proud of this community because mm -hmm. they empowered us to be able to do this. So gratitude to them. But we have a big announcement for the Mystery Mail Call members. Starting July, every single Mystery Mail Call box will receive a kid's book, a comic book that is suitable for all ages. Our comic box is filled with a lot of mature titles more often than not. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just how it goes. Right. Comic books are, you know, age ranges all over the place. We send out Walking Dead. You know, we try to make sure that everything's tasteful. Sure. You know, we have a lot of kids in the community, but this is not a kid's box. However, it's been my goal since the very beginning. You remember I was chatting about this when we first started. Absolutely. There's a massive misconception that comic books are for kids. And really, most of them are not. A lot of them are kind of aimed at people in their 20s to 30s. And we have a lot of readers that have been doing it for 30 years or more. So we really want to focus on the children being able to read and getting something that parents and kids can enjoy together. This is something that Tom's been talking about for years. And I'm so excited that we're finally able to put this in the mystery mail call. This isn't going to replace any other exclusive that we're doing. This right here is a team up with Scoot Comics, an imprint of Scout Comics. And because it's the mystery mail call and it's our exclusives, right. every single one of these books, not only are appropriate for children, but they will be an homage to a popular kid's book. And we are having fun with it. The first one is a Dr. Seuss homage and it's called Claire and the Dragons. So if you have kids at home, this book's for them. If you know a kid, this book's for them. Thank you so much, Comic Fam. We're so excited about this. And let's jump into this list. Comic fam, hit that like button. Slap the subscribe button. We're investing in the next gen of comic readers. Let's start them off at number 10 with some Stan Sakai goodness. Number 10 on the list, Usagi Ajimbo number 20. Now, this is a brand new book this week, but we're already seeing $15 average sales because it's the first appearance of Yukichi Yamamoto. This new character, who's drawn wonderfully in this book, was trained by Swordmaster Itsuki. And after Usagi travels to try and meet this swordmaster he runs into this new character they have a conversation and realize they've met in the past when she was training under the master swordsman years ago they go and get food they battle together fighting some enemies and by the end of this we are seeing that the narrative is going to continue into the next issue and this is one of those situations where it's such a respected run however there's not a whole lot of people with this common Comic book on their poll list that when the character was introduced members had to go to ebay to secure a copy i suspect low print counts as well as this new character buzz is causing the prices to move up especially considering there's a one in ten variant by jesus hervas and it's seeing 40 dollars average sales so Asagi Yajimbo has a dedicated fan base, but the last miniseries we saw had Peach Momoko covers, and those were selling very, very well. I was getting, on average, 25 sales of each cover. Now, this one, I had three people order this. We still have the diehards. We still have the people who like Asagi Yajimbo. But as far as availability, that's why people are going to have to go to eBay on this one. Now, we know there's a Netflix series coming up, and I'm not quite certain if this is the type of character that they would bring to a Netflix series, especially if it's going to be space is soggy, but I am excited to see where this goes. That's a good point, man, because when we found out about this news back in 2020, all we know, and really there's no new news that's come out since, is that this narrative is going to follow a future descendant of Usagi Yojimbo. So this character is very likely not going to hit the screen. But what is going to hit the screen is some toxic Avenger 
Peter Dinklage goodness at number nine, Toxic Avenger, issue number one. Talk about unlikely. This is one of those things that I love the trauma films. I love Lloyd Kaufman stuff. Toxic Avenger is a fantastic movie. Tromeo and Juliet, uh, Sergeant Kabuki Man, NYPD. Like, I really, really love those movies. They're so awful. They're wonderful. Classics, man. And the fact that they have... Kevin Bacon and Peter Dinklage. I mean, the lineup for this movie is ridiculous. I, I, I'm mind blown, but it totally justifies the fact that this is now going for a $35 average sale, a $400 sale for a CGC 9.8, and we're even seeing newsstands approaching $600. Elijah Wood and Peter Dinklage, Julia Davis and Kevin Bacon announced, confirmed for casting. This news has got me hyped to no end. And the origin story of this everyday man falling into like a toxic tub. I mean, he doesn't get, he doesn't fall into it. He like gets propelled into it after being thrown out of a two-story building. This is going to be mad and I'm so hyped for it. The movie is insane. The comic book is so over the top and I am very, very excited for this contemporary reimagining. That's what they're calling it. Oh, a yeah. contemporary reimagining of this <laughs> low budget film. Twice the amount of copies sold week over week after this news. Comic fam, keep an eye out for Marvel Age 98 where this character was first featured in preview. And let's take a look at number eight on the list with some McFarlane goodness. Brian Michael Bendis love. We got Sam and Twitch number one. Now this book is selling for $15 average sales and a high sale of $35. That's a raw sale though. This is the type of book that... I would think people would have graded because if you pay attention to the Spawn universe, Sam and Twitch's first appearance is in Spawn number one. And that book we've been talking about for years because of the Spawn movie that was announced back in 2017. So now the fact that we have Sam and Twitch that's been optioned for a cop style show, very excited about this but it's a different spec entirely. An increase of copies sold of 1,275%. Shout out to that Ashley Wood cover. Here's the thing. As you mentioned, it's going to be like a cop show, a, a detective show. Right. This isn't like a superhero comic book. And this right here, although is exciting, McFarlane is hitting press. He is talking a storm about this McFarlane spawn universe that's emerging that's going to hit streaming services. There's no streaming service attached. Right. There is nothing actually happening right now besides McFarlane saying that, you know, they started the talks of stuff. And here's the thing. Spawn has been in talks since, as you mentioned, 2017. Right. We've been waiting for years mm -hmm. for this to have any more news get attached to this project. I think that what this book on this list means is that Spawn, the movie, is not coming. It's not coming anytime soon. What this tells me is like a $15 average sale on a book that has potential show spec. Yeah. Awesome. It's a cheap buy-in. Mm -hmm. You know, Gotham was a detective-led show. It was pretty good. Lucifer ended up being more of a cop detective type show. Right. Also pretty decent, but there's a lot of cop shows. They get canceled a lot as well. Mm -hmm. What this tells me more is that Spawn 1 is probably seeing its heights right now. And I'm glad I didn't drop a bunch of money on Spawn over this last year. And I was pretty damn close. Spawn is such a great book. There's a lot of nostalgia tied to it. People love Todd McFarlane's art and love Todd McFarlane's character. But the print run is high. Yes, the anomalies, the newsstand, the covers that don't have black ink on them, the ones even with like weird print stuff on the inside. Okay, there are things to chase. But yes, Spawn number one, it is probably at his height. I don't see it going much higher right now. What do you think, comic fam? Did I miss the boat? Should I have bought Spawn? Am I going to be regretting that I'm saying this in a couple of weeks when Spawn ends up getting optioned and we find out more in movie news? Or is this the height of the book? And is this the time to sell? I got to know your thoughts in the comment section below. It'll enter you to win this John Tyler Christopher Rogue Negative Space Variant. Shout out to Godly Comics for sending this in for us to give away to the comic fam. Now let's take a look at number seven on the list because we've talked about option spec. We've talked about new character spec, but we need to talk about spec because the book is so damn good. Number seven on the list, Stray Dogs from Image Comics. We are seeing $25 average sales and an $80 high sale for a CGC 9.8 for a book that has been described as 
All Dogs Go to Heaven meets Dexter. We're seeing a 286% increase in copies sold after seven days for a book that's only been out for a couple months. It's a five-issue series, a suspense thriller that's told in the point of view of a dog, a cute dog at that, and a comic that when you read it, you're going to trick yourself into thinking you know, at certain parts because it's so funny and so cute that you're reading a kid's book. But it's not a kid's book. It is absolutely not for kids, Tom. But Fire Guy Ryan was talking about how this is one of his favorite books on his poll. Well, we happen to have the color flatter for the book. Lauren Perry is actually a box customer at the shop. Now, for those of you that don't know what a color flatter is, it's the person that goes into the inked comic where you've got like the black and white drawing. And she's the one that decides what numbers, like color by number numbers, go on the art page. And then the colorist comes in and actually adds gradients and shading. So it's really cool, but she's one of those people that works on the book. She came in in January and completely said, Russ, I'm working on the coolest book. Do not show this to your children. You're going to think it's a kid-friendly book, but it's not. It is gritty. It is dark. And everyone needs to read it. And the benefit of me telling you that you need to read it right now is that there are so many multiple printings of issue one, two, and three, and all of them are awesome horror variant covers. That's right. They are killing it with the variant covers for this run. And we're getting solicitations for issues four and five. They're doing it throughout the entire run. And let's just showcase... All of our favorites right. because this is brilliant. All right. We have Silence of the Lambs getting a variant, right. Poltergeist getting a variant. The Blair Witch variant, which I just bought for a little over $100, is hitting $450 for a CGC 9.8. Now, that one's a shop exclusive variant. There were only 500 of the Blair Witch variant. A lot of the other ones are readily available at stores. Did you see the Midsummer variant? I did, but I am really stoked about the Evil Dead variant. Shout out Sam Raimi. <laughs> Dude, we got The Thing getting a variant. We have a Friday the 13th variant. Yep. Even Stephen King's It got a variant comic fam you got to read this comic book it follows the dog who gets adopted by a murderer now let's take a look at number six on this list we got to talk about hulk's son number six on the list what if planet hulk number one now this is the first appearance of scar who is hulk's son now this book is seeing average sales at 120 dollars with a high raw sale of 200 dollars this week And with a 208% increase in copies sold for that expensive of a book, hot damn comic fam, what's going on? We're hearing rumors that Scar may be incorporated in the upcoming She-Hulk show on Disney+. Plus. Scar was recently reintroduced to the Marvel comics in the last month or so, and that coupled with the fact that there's a She-Hulk show coming, there is potential, I understand, but this feels like a stretch. I agree with you, Russ. This story takes place in an alternate reality that spun off from the Planet Hulk narrative. This character, they didn't realize survived the destruction of the planet that then caused Bruce Banner to fly back to Earth and cause a ruckus with the Avengers. This character, his son, like came out of the rubble and had to fight on a daily basis to survive. He's hardcore. He's angry. And his Hulk persona is so uber powerful that it's very difficult to imagine that he would ever be introduced at all into the MCU, let alone as a character that's going to be introduced in a show that's being described as a comedy. When we've seen Scar before, he is generally very, very powerful and really one of those things that would be a malevolent force. I mean, I could see him being almost an antagonist, some type of villain in Thor 4 or maybe even Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Nothing at all for a She-Hulk series that's supposed to be a comedy. Maybe something a little bit more like Amadeus Cho. Yeah, and I think that is where I would be leaning as far as spec goes. Totally awesome Hulk. Like, that's next-gen spec. It's been happening for over two years. And that character, more mild-mannered, it fits way better than this son of Hulk. Comic fam, if you like what you're seeing and you want to support the show, you should click the link in the description down below or go to comictom101.com and sign up for our mystery mail call box. Now, with a children's comic in every box. Now, this is kind of funny because it's all coincidental, but in contrast to the kids' announcement... (laughs) We will be also making a boys number one Homelander variant. That's right. We got Ben Temple Smith, one of the horror masters in the comic game to do this stellar cover. We're bringing back 
Garth Ennis, Boys Number no. One from 2006. And it's not just a Mill Geek Comic Tom exclusive, it's a combo exclusive with our good friend Jem from Gem Mint Collectibles. It's your boy Gem Mint. Very excited for this one. Link in the description. We got virgins and trade dresses going out at random. And let's talk about number five on the list. We got Fantastic Four 353, Mobius and Mobius making it. $80 average sales and $660 for a high sale wow. of CGC 9.8. We knew we would be talking more about Mobius and Mobius with the Loki series come out and the fact that Owen Wilson is doing an incredible job with this character. Now, everyone needs to keep in mind that while the new stand in high grade is more rare, the actual cover appearance of Mobius is in that little newsstand box. So if you want his cover appearance, you're going to want the direct copy and not the newsstand copy, which is kind of an anomaly. An increase of copies sold of 118% week over week. The TVA on the minds of a lot of members. This Loki show is a banger. Owen Wilson is killing it. However, he's an A-list actor. I'd be surprised if we're going to see him much after this show. So my spec, I could be entirely wrong here, is that he's either going to die or he is someone else entirely. Loki is mischievous. This whole show is bringing up a lot of questions and they're doing a lot of interesting reveals by the episode. Maybe he's someone else entirely. I'm crossing my fingers that he's Kang. We've talked about that since last year. Mm -hmm. It's probably wrong, but I am hesitant to put money behind a book like this. I mean, $660 for a 9.8, that's a lot of money for a key book for an actor who is leading his own films generally. Tom, you do have a really good point there because a lot of times when you have a mainstream actor, they're probably not going to give up the rest of their career just to join the MCU. Now, we're seeing Russell Crowe is going to be Zeus. Is he going to be hanging out for a while? Is he going to be playing Zeus forever? No, he's in the movie with Christian Bale, the God killer. He's probably going to die. But then on the other hand, we had Benicio Del Toro play the collector and he wasn't around very long. So maybe something's going to happen to Mobius and Morbius or he'll be Kang or and we'll just go and do something else. That was a $5 book 11 months ago, Russ. Now let's take a look at the list at number four with Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars issue number three. $55 average sales and $500 for a CGC 9.8 high sale on the news that Titania is going to be in the She-Hulk movie as the villain. And I'm super excited that Jamila Jamil is going to be playing her because The Good Place was the best show. My God, I love Ted Danson. <laughs> I do too, and she killed it in that she show. She was so fantastic. She's going to be really awesome in this show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch her take on this antagonist. Oh, totally. And in this comic book, we see a character who was prime to becoming a super villain. Dr. Doom sought her out after it was uncovered that she just experienced years of bullying and frustration. So he gives her powers and puts her on the task to take on She-Hulk. She is a boo to absorbing man, which is really cool, and a constant foe of Jennifer Walters. It's great to see another Secret Wars book spiking like this. 415% increase in copies sold this week. And I'm just excited when they're trying to change up what's going on and be a little bit different than people are expecting. Different genre entirely. It's mm -hmm. so cool what's happening in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, talking about number three on the list, we told you spoilers were incoming. This has been nothing but spoilers. I hope we didn't piss anyone off for us. We have <laughs> Thor number five, the first Full appearance of Loki as a female as he was reborn into Sif's body. Now, this is the 2008 run written by Straczynski, not the most recent run written by Donny Cates, which also has a key of issue number five, first appearance of Black Winter. Now, we are seeing $45 average sales and $116 high sale for a raw copy of this book. We know it has to do with Loki. We know that people are going to be specking on this, but this seems hyper inflated right now and i definitely wouldn't pay these prices i think they're going to come crashing down at the end of the show a 229 percent increase in copies sold after the episode two reveal that the alternate timeline version of loki that's killing the minutemen from episode one lighting them on fire is a female but tom the show is nothing like the comic book not even a little bit that's right the character in the comic is our loki reborn into a female body however in the show it's a different timeline, Loki. It's an entirely different character. So the key significance here is the sole fact 
that Loki is a female. With that considered, it's hard to believe that this book is going to continually go up in value. This is a interesting moment for Loki in the comics. Sure, it's a minor key, but we were talking about the time where he, in cameo, changed into a woman briefly in Thor Annual 18 just last week. So mm -hmm. this isn't even the first time that something like this has happened, regardless of this being entirely different from the show. Number two on the list, Nightwing number 78. This is the first appearance of Melissa Zuko, the new mayor of Bloodhaven. So $25 average sales and $50 high sale for a raw copy. This Taylor and Redondo run, if you are not reading it, you need to get on it. I have so many people reading this Nightwing book. They are really changing how comic books should be looked at. This is fantastic. We have a 517% increase in copies sold in the last seven days after the reveal in issue 81. Spoilers incoming, be warned, but that's how this whole show has gone. We have the mayor, Melinda Zuko, in the last few issues of this run, her intentions were kind of being seeded. You were kind of seeing that she was up to no good, right. associating with Blockbuster, associating with Mr. Maroney. But here's the thing. Issue 78 made it clear at the end that she knows information about the Flying Graysons. We see that last panel. So is she up to no good? Well, issue 81 just changed everything. All right, guys, get ready to cover your ears if you don't want to know what's happening. But we find out that Melissa Zuko is actually a Grayson. She's Dick's sister, and he has lived his whole life thinking he has no family, but he does have family, and it's the corrupt mayor of Bluehaven. <laughs> That's right. And we have a comic book that I can't help but recommend to so many people because the style in which it's drawn, the narrative is so good. It's funny. Oracle is so great in this. We see Tim Drake fighting side by side with Nightwing. The panel placements are so superb. The colors are vibrant. The action sequences are like nothing I've seen in comics recently. This comic needs to be on your pull list, comic fam. I can't recommend it enough. Just like I can't recommend enough the best comic app in the world. If you folks aren't using Key Collector app, which knows what's up. You guys have got to use code TOM101 for the absolute best comic book app in the industry right now. I use it multiple times a day. I learn so much about comic books and I do this for a living. Use code TOM101 to get a free two-week subscription, support this show, and enhance your comic collecting, your reading, your organizing, your spec, your knowledge. And let's talk about the number one trending comic book in the world. Number one on the list, Venom. Number nine, first appearance of Dylan Brock. This book is a book that Tom and I have been talking about for over two years since it came out, 26 months ago to be exact. $80 average sales, $385 for a CGC 9.8 high sale. You know what? Eddie Brock's son, we knew he was going to be important, but did we know he was going to be this important? We have over 1,050% increase in copies Whoa. sold after Donny Cates finished his legendary run on the title. It's going to be known as the best Venom story arc that's ever been written. And Venom 200 was a big book, a $10 MSRP, yep. and it was worth every penny. We sold so many copies of this book. It had so many incredible covers, and I knew that the content would rival how fantastic these covers were. People are devouring this, and everyone is very, very happy to see an end to the story arc, but they're very sad to see Donny Cates go because we know he's going on to other books, but man, his Venom run has been unparalleled. So we have more spoilers incoming. Eddie Brock is essentially seeing the end of his arc. He's old now. He's got a cane. He's definitely not up to continuing the Venom legacy, but he's doing so much good. He's king of the symbiotes at this point. I mean, he beat Null. He's controlling all of the symbiotes, past and present. And he's even getting an invite to join the Avengers, and he turns it down. He's not up for, you know, continuing this hero journey, but he does recommend Flash Thompson, Agent Venom. Nice. That's really exciting. And by the end of the book, we see the stage set 
for a new Venom. Now, we've seen Dylan get beat up at school, and he is doing his best to behave himself. He's not fighting back. He's really just taking it. But you know what? He sees Jack-O-Lantern on the streets, and something happens that triggers him. Well, he gets shot. He has to be saved by the symbiote. He turns into Venom. This Hulk-sized symbiote takes out Jack-O-Lantern, and he's a little worried after the fact that he's going to piss his dad, Eddie, off. But Eddie's proud of him. And by the end of the issue, we have a new Venom. Exciting stuff. Here's the thing. As far as spec goes, there's going to be a new writer that's going to take on this narrative. Donnie's going over to Hulk to team up with Ryan Otley. So who knows where we're going to take the symbiote and this character. It could all be changed in one issue. So tread lightly. But it does feel really good to see Dylan take on the symbiote in Full. It's awesome to have this come full circle. Comic fam, don't forget to enter to win this giveaway in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this video, this comic book news. Are you watching Loki? And as always, geek responsibly. Enough set. Comic fam, we got other videos for you. We got a podcast. We're pumping out so much content. We're doing it for you. Have a great week.